I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data engineering. In this episode, we're going to go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to learn about how to handle null values or empty values in our queries and controls. And in order to do that, we're going to use the, the NZ function, uh, which uh, is very, very handy. And if you do any amount of, of access programming seriously, you will need to know this function. So without further ado, let's get to our null and empty values in Microsoft Access. Okay, so to get started, I'm just using a access file that we've used for several other of our demonstrations. It's got a bunch of junk data in here, but we're going to make a new table. And uh, we'll put an ID at the top uh, as an auto number, and we'll put that as a key in a minute here. And we'll add a field called my text, and I'll set that to 50 length, and then I'll, uh, I'll put my number as a number and then I'll do my date I guess as, uh, as a date and we can use a date field as well for this demonstration. And then I'll go ahead and I'll put a primary key on there uh, which is good practice and then I'll save our table so we've got our table called NZ test. And, uh, and then from there we can we can see if we look at our data sheet view we've got an empty table and uh, there's a text field, and there's a number field, um, and a date field uh, that we can type into. So I'll put ABC in my text field, I'll put a 1 in my number, and then I'll just choose a date from our uh, calendar here for the, uh, for the date field, and then and on the next field I'll put DEF, and then I'll leave my number as a null, and uh, I'll leave the date as a null as well, null meaning empty or, or unknown. And then I'll leave a, a you know, text null entry on the third row and I'll put some date into my date on the third row. So we've got some, some null values in there and uh, we can proceed and take a look. So I'll go on to the create ribbon and I'll create a query design and then I can, uh, you can just close this pop-up table that has all our junk data from our previous uh, examples in there and I'll, you can grab the NZ test table and just drag it onto your query and then we can go ahead and take a look at uh, what we're going to get in our output. So the first thing we'll do is uh, using this uh, table here that we created we'll just double click and add our, our three um, columns that mean something to us um, that'll be the my text, my number, and my date fields. Okay, and then if we look at that in data sheet view, you can see our empty values are still there. And uh, um, so we can save this before we uh, proceed and make any changes to it. We'll call it our NZ query and hit OK, and that's going to save our query for us. So what we're going to do in order to change our data is we're going to use the same field uh, that we selected, but we're going to change the name and we're going to we're going to add the NZ function to it. So we'll call this first one full underscore text, and then the colon, uh, meaning that we're naming our field, and then we'll we'll put our NZ function in there around my text, and then uh, we'll put a comma after my text, and we'll put none, which means we want to show the word none if my text is is null. And you'll notice that it put the square brackets around there automatically for me around the uh, my text field. Um, so we can do the same thing for full number uh, where we'll say full number colon and then we'll put the NZ uh, my number and then comma and then we'll put a zero since this is a numeric field. So that means we want to show an, a zero if there's a, a null field or an empty field. And then for the last one, we'll do the same thing uh, for a date. We'll say full date as our field name, and then uh, we'll, we'll put the uh, colon, and then uh, NZ, and then my date, and then uh, we'll put a date literal in, in there for our expression, meaning we'll use the hashtags, and we'll just put 1 1 2020 as you know, the default date if nothing is in that field. And so so that shows you uh, text, uh, number, and date. 
and so we can save that and then we'll we'll uh, look at the the data sheet view and as you can see it put the word none in there put a zero where the other null was and it put the uh, uh, 2020-0101 where uh, where the date was empty so everything's all hunky dory right well there is one big gotcha and it has to do with the text fields and the fact that you can put a uh, you can put a, an empty string into a text field. So to open the immediate window, use your control G as I showed you in previous episodes. And uh, in the immediate window, you can type in question mark and then NZ and then put null and then one. And you'll see that that gives you back a one because uh, you, what was passed into it was a null. If we did NZ uh, a, B, C, and D, E, F, you'd get A, B, C because there's obviously a value and it's not null that's being passed into NZ. Um, but what if we passed in quote quote, which is a zero length string, and we put none, you'll notice that it passed back a zero length string because a zero length string is not null. Um, and uh, null means unknown, but if we have a zero length string, then that can be inserted though it's it's not very common in access um, because normally when you type in fields and you do back up or erase a value in a field access will put a null in there for you but in some cases uh, where um, there are actually zero length strings in some data or or maybe some code you know in an application that you wrote so I'm going to simulate that now um, it might put in uh, a value into your table that has a zero length string and then when you use your NZ uh, function on a string uh, or on a text field it'll still show it that it's empty. So if I put in insert into NZ test um, you know an empty string into there and it says uh, you're about to append a row um, then uh, we've appended a row, we put in, we've inserted a row with an, with an empty string in there, or a zero length string. So now if we open our query that we put our NZ functions on, you'll see that we still have a field that looks empty, um, even though, <clears throat> even though we wanted to, to have um, the empty values or null values um, replaced. And uh, so as you can see, it looks like it's a null, what's in num row 3 is a null in the text but row 4 is an empty string or a, or a zero length string and so um, this is one thing that is a big gotcha and it can really screw you up so if you know about it in advance you can sort of plan for it if you know that um, there's a possibility you might have some zero length strings so I just expanded this uh, this field here and as you can see we've got our NZ in there like we typed in in the first place and we're just going to change that and we're going to use um, an IIF statement saying if this then that um, in one expression and so we're going to do a concatenation we're going to say um, empty string and then the ampersand and then my text field we'll put a len which is the length function around it and we'll say if the length length of my text is equal to zero, then put in none. Um, otherwise, put in my text. And you, it's good to do the uh, concatenation because it'll resolve the null into an empty string, and it'll work for nulls or empty strings. And so that's the way you can do that. And that's how you can do uh, nulls and empty strings using NZ and the length function in Microsoft Access. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to handle null and empty values in Access. If you like what you saw, please uh, give the video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. And uh, click the bell when you see the bell so that you'll be notified of any new content that I put up. If you have any questions or comments about what you saw today, please go ahead and put those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer your questions uh, as well as I can. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.